The Federal Reserve screwed us all, and now they want us to pay for it. Joe Biden forgets that his company has the tightest grip on fuel prices, and Congress is the only employer that can afford to give all of their employees a raise in this economy. This is The Laughing Libertarian, and I'm your host, Alan McFarland. But before we start the show, I just want to let you know that YouTube doesn't want to pay us until we have 1,000 subscribers, and we love doing this. So if you enjoy what we're doing here, please like, subscribe, and share on all your favorite social media. Thank you. So how's that bank account loving you these days? If you're like most Americans, not that great. I'm broke. (laughs) That sucks. Because everything is beginning to cost too much. U.S. households are already spending an extra $296 each month. And that's if you're already established. Anyone try to buy a house? People are already spending tens of thousands over asking price just for the opportunity to be immediately underwater. And many are currently getting rates in the fours making that already inflated mortgage cost them a fortune in lost equity or collateral. But don't worry, just buy an electric car. And that 4% rate is going to be temporary as well, as everyone's favorite morons put their impact-dented heads together and decided they will raise the interest rate for the first time in over three years. Stupid! Worth it. Don't worry, though. They'll continue to do that possibly 10 more times by the end of 2023. And this is all an attempt to control inflation, but it's a fine balance. Too much interest and boom, recession. Recessions bring job loss and then people aren't fighting for 15 anymore. They're fighting for full time. And those homes you overpaid for, well, they become development projects as large real estate companies show up in your neighborhood and buy everything during that fire sale. Sounds like BlackRock. (laughs) Definitely. But this is what happens when you print money. This is what happens when you devalue your currency. And even those 10 interest hikes, won't be able to outpace inflation. We're just too late to this game. And unlike ladies in the 80s, going on a date with Bill Cosby, that is, the Federal Reserve doesn't seem as trusting as they claim to be. In one hand, they claim the economy is strong, but then they downgraded economic growth forecast from 4% to 2.8%, when in fact, it's probably gonna be lower than that. What is old Joe doing for us in this area? Not a damn thing other than telling us to buy electric cars and claiming fuel companies are padding their profits. You know, it's not like there's a process involved when converting crude oil into gasoline or anything. The real question remains, however, is he upset that our people are circling the drain financially? Or is it that there's a sect of the population that isn't going to be buying as much fuel, which affects the gathering of federal fuel tax? (laughs) Couldn't be that, right? It has to be those evil companies, those giant corporate greed machines, right? No, the parental figure better known as the democratic government just has to be there to provide and protect. When in reality, they take our money, create a problem, then half-ass fix that problem while blaming anything else and finally pocketing the remainder of our hard-earned cash. They have helped us by destroying our buying power. First, in 1933, They took our dollar off the gold standard. Then 30 years later, in 1963, the government began the wind down of the silver certificate bills. So what the hell are we left with? Promises. That tracks. Your money is backed by the promise of a value by a government that will flood the market with promise paper whenever it needs to. Which, as we've learned from COVID lockdowns, sheet for sheet, toilet paper is probably more valuable. Our dollar has the volatility of a collectible these days. So stop letting people convince you that the price is only going up solely due to the rise in cost of labor or raw materials, but it also has a lot to do with your dollar losing about 15 cents in buying power over the last two years. So while American families are paying the extra $296 each month and companies attempt to absorb the massive cost increases while they keep our citizens employed, that is. But what did Congress do? Well, that depends on who you ask. People on the right, they declared Congress have given themselves a 21% raise, but the left argues that the 21% is for help, travel, and operation costs. You know, the rest of us call that a benefits package, and most people consider that a part of your salary. Move on! Nothing to see here! Please disperse! Nothing to see here! Please! Oh, that magical word, though, travel. 
Could you imagine what non-congressional folks could do with an extra 21% for our fuel tanks? That's right. We could travel this beautiful country spending Biden-provided 85-cent bills. Just when he uses the voice like, what you mean it's not a fitty? Everybody's like, that's racist. <laughs>